<clears throat> you know, closer to the river and up on hills, Galef Bloom was not damaged very much. When you get away from um, Highland, maybe closer to the river, uh, Gardner area, maybe there was more damage. Uh, I certainly, I think, uh, Valacia area had more damage, at least that I saw. So I only present these numbers just to sort of give us a clue as to what's happened so far. Now the petal fall thinning that went on May 21st is probably what reduced the fruit number down to the 400 level. The heat that we've just experienced in the last several days, we won't be able to see the impact of that natural thinning event for a few more days. It would require remeasuring these same fruits in about four more days. <clears throat> now, possibly if we have uh, more meetings, we'll have some indication of that about uh, four days from now, at least for this one site. <clears throat> but at least uh, we can get a sense that um, there's still quite a few apples, at least on Gala in the Hudson Valley, and we need more thinning. Well, we tried at the Monday meeting to indicate we probably should wait out the heat and then come to this point in time. But that brings us to this point in time when we should be applying our normal 10 to 13 millimeter spray to get the bulk of our thinning done. I think we're past the heat. <clears throat> At least in terms of carbohydrate deficits, we're past the worst. And it's now time to spray. <clears throat> I appreciate also Dan sending me some fruit size data and um, Jenny Chris for sending me some fruit size data that I think her brother Joel collected. And you add that to the Hudson Valley lab data. I show here kind of the Ranges of fruit sizes, mostly in the <clears throat> uh, Ulster County area. Um, largest kings with Gaylor are getting up closer to 15 millimeters, but the average fruit size is still around 10. Uh, Ruby, one Ruby Frost Orchard had large king, largest kings at 13 and a half, but the average for all fruits was six millimeters. And one Milton block, you know, 13 millimeters for the largest kings and seven and a half. And we can go on down through there. Most of the kings are somewhere between 13 to 14 to 15 maybe, but the average is between seven and 10. Now I only had data from Dan for one um, Columbia County block and that was a Honeycrisp block with a, just had the average of 8.7 millimeters. I presume that in general in the Columbia County sizes are slightly smaller, but it shows us that we're still in the prime window for thinning. We'll probably rapidly move beyond that prime window, but I think there's still an opportunity today and tomorrow and Saturday to do a significant amount of thinning. <clears throat> I ran the balance, carbon balance model for the Hudson Valley lab site just to talk a little bit about the temperatures that we have today in sunlight and going forward and the deficits. The big deficits of minus 90 are past us, daily deficits. Today, it's predicted to have a deficit of minus 60, but that's gonna be followed by very, very mild days of deficit in tomorrow and Saturday. And then some surplus carbohydrate days on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Now, if you look at the temperatures in the sunlight, what primarily drives that is the high temperatures at night that we've had in the 60s is what largely, and, and cloudy weather is what largely drives these very negative deficits. They'll have a high um, on uh, Saturday night, it looks of 66, and that'll drive a deficit. But once we get into uh, Sunday and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we have nighttime temperatures in the mid 40s to low 50s and daytime temperatures in the low 70s or high 60s and bright sunshine predicted for all of those days. That's ideal for carbon production and will drive the surpluses that we're gonna see. Now, another thing I want you to notice on this chart is that today the 28th, we're at about 260 degree days from full bloom. 
Now that's just outside of the really sweet spot, which we say is between 200 and 250, and those are colored in green yesterday, the day before, and the day before. But I want to hasten to add that we still get thinning once we're past 250 degree days. Our data shows that the thinning response is a broad U-shaped curve with the little thinning at petal fall and then the curve drops to greater and greater thinning as we get to this 200 and 250. But when we go past 250 degree days, the curve doesn't immediately go to, zero, to no thinning at all. It slowly uh, goes up may, indicating a gradual loss of sensitivity. So I know that some of you are really worried that we might be past this prime window, but there's still an opportunity to spray today, tomorrow, and Saturday and get substantial thinning. Now, once we get into next week, it'll be a little harder because of positive carbohydrate balance. And the model is probably going to ask you to increase your rates by 30%. <clears throat> I want to review that uh, mostly at this time, today, tomorrow, or Saturday, you should be using a combination of either NaN7, Maxellin7, or if you don't want 7 in your, on your product for marketing, then spray Maxellin and NaA. I just wanted to list also here that once we get average fruit sizes above 15, then you've got to start adding some oil either to NaN7 or Maxellin7. I list here ethyl and oil, but it's never really worked that well for us. It will work at really warm temperatures. But we don't get those very often, and you know maybe they'll come back when we get to this stage, but it's not likely. So the first two are the best option, and the one in blue, Maxell 7 and oil, is our one that's worked most consistently. So let me go through some suggestions. It seems to me that if you've already started thinning today, great. I think today and tomorrow are the best days to thin. Now that's complicated by rain. I always run into this issue that somebody every year calls me and says, I just sprayed two hours ago and it started to rain. What do I do? How much is washed off? Should I retreat? It's hard to say. It's a difficult thing. But sometimes we just get caught. But in, in a good, perfect world, we need at least eight hours of drying after the spray before any rain to get the maximum effect. Now, Dwayne Green showed a number of years ago that you can continue to get uptake for almost 24 hours after spraying NAA, but basically 90% of the uptake is in the first eight hours. So try, if possible, to work around rain showers to get eight hours of drying from the moment you spray before any rain. That may limit some of the uh, spraying that could be done tomorrow. <clears throat> now, if all galas were like the Hudson Valley Lab, then I would spray a full dose of uh, Maxell, which is 64 ounces, on a dilute tree row volume basis, and a pint of seven per hundred on a dilute tree row volume basis today or tomorrow. I wanted to just go through this little calculation again so we don't get crossed up in how much goes on. I used the example of a mature tall spindle orchard. When you measure it, let's just assume that it measures at 200 gallons. The rates I just quoted you are for the, each 100 gallons of the 200 gallons. So in essence, you have to double those rates I just gave you, which means you'd be putting on a full 128 ounces of Maxell, which is a gallon to the acre, and you'd be putting on two pints of seven per acre. So the rates that I quote are always uh, for the 100 gallon dilute equivalent. And then you have to measure your trees, determine the full tree row volume, then calculate how much chemical goes on an acre. Now, you don't have to spray 200 gallons of water. You can spray 100. I love 2x application. You can spray 75. And I love 3x applications. Or you can even spray 50 gallons of water. I'm not so enthused about that because it's 4x and I love 2 or 3x's. But 4x will also work if you're in a pinch to get over ground quick. Now I'd be happy after I finish here in a couple more minutes to go back through those discussions with anybody that's still confused. Now if you don't spray uh, today or tomorrow, 
and you wait till Saturday or Sunday to spray, then you're looking at a much milder thinning response because both the fruits are getting bigger and because the carbohydrate balance switches to a very positive level. <clears throat> so you will need to increase your rates at least 30% if you wait to spray on those days versus spraying yesterday, today, or tomorrow. I end with just saying, um, I love to get the data, see what's happened, and then make decisions on respraying. So anybody that wants to measure fruit and is willing to send me the data and I'll interpret it and give you further suggestions. If you measured already once and you're gonna measure again on Sunday, that measurement will probably include, to a large extent, the natural thinning we got over from the heat and anything you did as a petal fall spray. It will not really show the impact of a spray that you put on today or tomorrow or Saturday or Sunday. To get estimates of the impact of those sprays, you've got to wait and measure three days after the spray and then eight days after that spray. <clears throat> But that's kind of a little introduction to a discussion I hope we can have now about what are your concerns and how can I help? Thank you, Terrence. Uh, we do have um, one question that's come in. Uh, what base are you using for your degree days? The base is 38 degrees. It's a plant base. Alan Laxo and I did a number of correlations with different base temperatures. Most of the ones on NUA are insect-based <clears throat> or disease-based, but this is more of a plant-based. It's 38-degree base. I'm not real happy with it. I was telling another group yesterday that I'm trying to make a whole different degree day model that will account for temperatures even below 38 because plants are responding to all temperatures above 32 degrees. Okay. We had a couple of questions come in beforehand. Uh, first question is, will applications of solubor one pound per hundred gallon and urea three pound per hundred gallon to a poorly set crop do anything to help keep the remaining fruit from dropping? Not very much. The solubor could have helped if it was applied at pink. When it's applied at petal fall at this time, it will do nothing to improve the retention of damaged flowers or weak flowers. The urea could potentially help weak flowers be retained. And so I probably would try it, but I don't think it's gonna help very much. Okay, thank you. Another question we have is, if we thin tomorrow, how do we factor in natural fruit thinning we cannot see yet? That's the real challenge. <clears throat> I said in our emergency meeting on Monday that this heat wave is going to give us some thinning and nobody can really say what it is until we measure fruits. So we should measure fruits and in about four days we could tell you. <clears throat> but my best guess is, <clears throat> based upon what I'm seeing in the Hudson Valley Gala data, that <clears throat> we still will need more thinning even though we got some thinning from the heat. So my, you know, this is my opinion. Your livelihood's on the line. It's not my livelihood, but I still think that you should use a full rate of thinner today or tomorrow to get from where it looks like we are with Gala down to the reasonable crop load. I don't think the heat wave is going to knock them all off or knock off near enough. Okay. <clears throat> Question. When we are in the rescue thinning stage, would you increase rates 30% as well next week or this weekend? Okay, so let me do, uh, I think I saw so a similar question from a person that contacted me directly. And I don't think anybody's to the rescue thinning stage yet. At least the fruit measurement data that I saw, that Jenny sent me, that uh, Dan sent, that uh, Dana, Donna sent, we're still in the normal thinning window. So you really have to get average fruit sizes up to 15. The kings will be 18 or 19 or 20, and the average will be 15 before we start calling it rescue treatments. 
So I, I want to emphasize, I think the rest of this week, we are still going to call normal 12 millimeter thinning. Now, once we get into next week, it looks like it's a cool period. And fruits will be getting bigger, about three quarters of a millimeter per day. And so if we're in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time frame, and it's cool, we're probably going to have to increase rates. But the carbohydrate model will indicate that. So it doesn't go that far for me right now, but it, it, it is indicating that we'll have surpluses. And the, the recommendation is going to be increase rates 15 to 30 percent. So I think you'll need to do that, plus add the pint of oil. <clears throat> but a lot of it depends on how well the sprays that might have gone on yesterday, today, tomorrow, and Saturday work. And that I'd love to sort of wait a few days and try to see how that's looking before we talk about rescue treatments next week. So I would not add oil this week. If you're thinking you already need a rescue treatment and add oil because your fruit's getting too big, just be patient. Don't get too worried yet. Just put on your normal thinning spray now. Then let's try to maybe have another conversation, say Tuesday or Wednesday, and have more data and make a decision then on whether or not we increase rates. But that one next week will need oil. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, we have another question here. I applied NAA at the rate of three ounces per 100 gallon and one part seven at Petal Fall to Macoon. There are 50% king set and many laterals. I plan to apply 64 ounces of Maxell and one part seven in the next day or two at 12 millimeter. Historically, this has not been sufficient. Should I increase the Maxell rate or await the response? If further thinning is necessary, what should I use? Okay, so that is exactly the recipe that we recommend from a cow. It's exactly what we want. <clears throat> so I would say go forward with it. If you historically it hasn't been enough, the, the wild card this year is this heat wave that we've had, which will give some natural thinning. So rather than tell you to increase rates, I would just say put on that rate that you just quoted, 64 ounces of Maxell and a pint of seven, but don't increase it today or tomorrow or Saturday because I think you'll get the assist from the natural thinning event of the heat. It'll probably turn out wonderful. Great. Um, if anybody else has any questions, please type them in the question and answer box or raise your hand and I will unmute you. Well, nothing so far. Um, anybody else have anything to add? Well, I'll just add a couple more thoughts that come to mind. You know, we were all worried about the damage from frost, and that's still a factor. It may be that the little bit of data that I've been able to look at from the Hudson Valley Lab didn't have much damage, data came through. But on blocks where there was significant damage, you still want to be cautious. You still want to maybe not put on full rates. Uh, wait till tomorrow and then spray maybe a reduced rate. But that decision on how much damage you have to make yourself, you have to really assess that block as we now can see more clearly which fruits are growing. If you don't have fruit diameter measurements, just go out and try to systematically look at a couple of trees about how many kings are there, how many big fruits look like they're actually growing, if you need a hundred fruits, just for an example, then you can just count a couple of trees and you think that there's at least 500 that are still, that are set and look good, you'll probably want to go ahead and thin almost normal. But if because of the frost damage and the heat, you really look at that tree carefully and you need a hundred and you really only can count about 150, you probably would be very cautious. Because many of the small laterals that aren't really look like they're really bigger, they're gonna fall off from the heat wave. Now that's what the fruit growth rate model does. There are fruits out there you can see right now that we already know are gonna fall off. I looked through Donna's data of Gala and <clears throat> there's, the model says there's 400 that's still growing, but there's still 600 fruits on those trees. So it's telling us 200 of those fruits on those trees, even though they're there, they're in the process of falling off. You just can't see it yet. 
but at least it tells us we've got still 400 active growing fruitlets. A couple more questions have come in. Um, one of them is for the blocks that are biennial and there's high variability between trees, do you recommend using the full rate required for the heavier set trees or you'd be afraid of thinning off the little bit of fruit on the lighter set trees? It's always a problem where it's biennial bearing because you get this variability going and it's difficult. We in the past, and I'll tell you what I've said up every year up until now with a small proviso, that is thin it according to the heavy bloom in the block because that's the only way to get it back all on the same track. If you go light, the ones that are heavy this year won't have anything next year and you'll have the same problem. Now, the only proviso I would add to that this year is if the block had a lot of frost damage, and even the heavy ones are not that heavy, the frost took out almost all the kings, and the number of fruits is not excessive, then taking a conservative approach, a mild thinner, will still allow those that are carrying the crop this year to come back next year with a reasonable bloom and you can get it more uniform. But what's problematic is to go year after year with uh, not putting on what you should for the heavy trees and then having half the block bloom and half the block not bloom every year, forever. Uh, an additional question. Many blocks in the Hudson Valley have coal damage. Would you still shut off the nozzles on the bottom half of the tree? Yeah, I took that slide out of what I was going to say because I feel like I'm redundant repeating myself too many times but it's still my opinion where you had frost damage. I think the bottoms will naturally thin down and what drift they get from the upper nozzles will do the adequate thinning job. And so I would shut off the lower third of the nozzle banks. If you have 10 nozzles, shut off three or whatever you've got on each side, a third. Okay, we don't have any further questions at this time. Oh, here comes one. We have a lot of varieties with many blank spurs and some with triples. Don't want a small crop of fruit. How do we adjust thinning rates or don't thin? Well, that's a, a case that, that you have many resting spurs. It's not likely that you'll have biennial bearing. Therefore, you wanna conserve the ones that have fruits to doubles. Triples is too many. You never get really quality fruit with triples. But what you would love to do is take off that third apple, or if you have four, the third and fourth apples, leaving all the rest of them with doubles. That is best done with just seven. So if you really are down to a lot of resting spurs and the crop is not too heavy, just come in with seven right now, today or tomorrow or, or, or Friday or Saturday. And hopefully that will thin down the cluster to two. I think that with the heat and some seven, we'll probably do a pretty good job getting clusters down to two. Like, for example, Donna's data in the Hudson Valley Lab shows we're down to two. But the problem there is every spur still has two, and there's no resting spurs. Okay, uh, next question. With a good king set on Ida Red approaching 14 millimeters and many laterals, no petal fall seven, would five parts per million and seven still be okay? It will be the perfect spray today or tomorrow. If you go all the way to Saturday when it cools down or Sunday, I think you'll need to increase that to seven and a half parts. But Ida Red thins quite well at five parts, and I think it'll thin very, very well this year, today or tomorrow. All right, next question. We use promelin on some cold blocks. It looks like it helps stick on apples, but many apples have only one or two seeds. What do you recommend on thinning these blocks? We uh, also tried to answer that question when we did our promelin work initially, and I don't have a perfect answer for it. Promelin does help stick on fruits with low seed counts, but you can also thin them off really easily. In the experiments that we ran, the cold damage was so much that we did not have a full crop, so we did not thin at all. So the question is, with your promelin, do you still have more apples than your target number? 
And I think that requires you to go to each block where you did this and really make a, an assessment, a really serious assessment of how many apples are still on that tree. If you're anywhere near the target number, even a, say 50% over, I wouldn't thin at all. Because some of those low seed count fruit will fall off naturally. But if what you really end up with is like five times as many fruit as you want, you have to thin. And in that case, mild rates of thinner, um, medium dose of Maxell and seven will take off some of the weakest low seed count fruits, but it won't take them all off. So I, maybe the person that asked that question could come back and follow up with, you know, really how many fruits are on those trees when you spade promalin? Okay, um, another question. What is the largest acreage that you have heard of that did all hand thinning? In New York, I think one acre, but in Washington, the 3,000 acres of Washington fruit, Fuji's, or the 1,000 acres of um, Avo Fruit Ranch, Fuji's, is all hand thinned at blossom. But they employ about every single farm worker in the entire state on those two farms. But hand thinning at bloom, uh, you know, just, just takes an army of people. Okay, next, uh, we have some promalin galas that are four times the target number and promalin honey crisps at three times. Um, that's all we've got here. Okay, so for the galas that are four times the target number, a significant full dose of Maxellin 7 today or tomorrow would just be optimum. And I think it'll really, really help, but it will likely also require an, an additional spray next week, about a week from today. For the Honeycrisp, with three times, was it three times, Sarah? I can't remember what you told it said. Three times the target. Yeah, with Honeycrisp, I think it also justifies a full application of NAA in seven right now at uh, seven and a half parts plus a pint of seven. Now, Maxell works on Honeycrisp. It's a little bit sensitive, so you, I'm, I'm afraid of high rates on Honeycrisp, but it works quite well. But often we get really large fruits, so we prefer the NAA and seven on Honeycrisp. Okay, we've uh, went through all the questions that came in so far. I wonder if I could just ask Dan to speak a little bit about what he's seen around the valley, in addition to maybe what I've picked up on the data I've seen. You've got, you've been there, Dan, and with your eyes, talk a little bit. Sure. I think first, I think back to 2016 when we had that slightly <laughs> earlier freeze, the early tight cluster, and we were concerned about about will the fruitlets stay on because of that maybe hidden winter injury. And what I'm seeing out there are actually really good seed counts. I think what is setting is setting. So I'm, I'm not so concerned about the effect of frost. I think the frost we've experienced have already expressed their damage and the, the flowers are gone, the fruitlets have already dropped. Um, I'm not sure on the heat wave you know, the weather changes here and it moderated quickly. So what looked really, really serious on Monday, and it was, has now, as, you, as you've said, uh, switching over into carbohydrate surpluses here by the weekend. So what does that mean? I think people do need to thin. And the crop in a lot of places is heavy. The galas are really set. They really are. Um, and they're some growers are out there uh, yesterday in the high heat, putting out the full rate of Maxell and Carbaryl, at least into the upper portion of the trees, uh, turning off their lower nozzles. But set looks good, and I think uh, I think we do need to thin. I would also like to hear from um, our uh, participant that asked the question about Promalin and and their fruit set. I do have a Perlin trial out there. 
Um, so I'll have some data on that this year, but I would like to talk to that person if they could reach out to me. I would also like to say thank you to uh, Jenny and Joel Christ of the Christ Brothers Orchard for uh, doing all those blocks yesterday. So I, I imagine they're gonna go back any other Sunday or Monday to remeasure. I've got four, uh, four examples that I'll go in and remeasure on Sunday. So by Monday, we should have some information, um, more, you know, more information to go with Donna's information. Um, and maybe we should consider having another meeting, another Zoom, um, if Terrence has you know, time in his schedule. Uh, I have time and I have the interest. So it would be great if we could get that data before we have the meeting though. So. Right, right. So if we collected that on Sunday, we'll probably need some of Monday to get it sorted through and, and analyzed. So we'll, we'll definitely work on that. But the bottom line is that there's a, there's a great crop out there. Um, and I'm, I am kind of curious, so it's Terrence, on when we talk about size, because our eyes are drawn to the king fruit when it's there. And sure, I measured some king honey crisp singles, <clears throat> rare apples, but a few of them are out there and they were 15 and a half millimeters. Yeah. Uh, however, everything else really on average is eight millimeters. And we saw, you know, the yeah. average of what we posted uh, earlier in the, in this meeting that average fruit size is running, you know, in the six to nine millimeter range. So when we talk about 10 to 12 millimeters, what are we talking about? Well, that's something that we have, jumped all over the board over the years. Some people do talk about king fruit diameter maximum, but generally when I'm speaking about it, I'm speaking about the average of the fruits that are still growing. So we will have kings larger than that average, but we'll have others that are smaller. And so what I've tended to do in the last few years is rely on the fruit growth rate model data. And I look at that list and say, all of these below a certain diameter are falling off, but those that are still growing, what's their average size? And the model will rank them from the biggest to the smallest that is still growing. And then you can have an average of things that are still growing. And that's what I judge to say the 12 millimeter spray or the 16, 17, 18 millimeter spray. So we still have time for the 12 millimeter spray because I don't think the average of all the fruits that are growing, at least from the data that Donna sent me, is bigger than 12 millimeters. The kings are 14 and a half, the biggest kings, but the average of all those that are still growing is less than that. So that's yeah, something maybe ought to define clearer all the time of what we're talking about, because you're right, our eyes are drawn to the biggest ones. And so we sometimes get really worried, wow. Yeah, my, my impression yesterday, particularly in, in Ulster County, where we're you know, kind of fearful that uh, while we're in the sweet spot and the size is going to get away with us if we hold off, but I sort of came away saying, well, we, we have a little bit more time. We do. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think. Um, also, my intention is to continue uh, the four sites that I'm going to do. I'm going to continue right on through June because as um, it's been a few years, but, but you and I had discussed, I think back in 2015 of we can use the, the growth rate model um, to evaluate June drop. And yeah. so my intention is to continue it at least weekly through June once we get past this thinning period and just to you know, see what we see yep. for June drop. Good, thanks, Dan. Those are helpful comments to the discussion. Uh, at this point, does anyone else uh, Want to chime in with uh, any more questions or you know, for Terrence, keep an eye open on the e-alerts. Uh, we'll, um, I'll send something out on Monday with uh, the timing of uh, another final thinning meeting of the series. Also, you know, doing these Zoom meetings is something new. Well, it's not new for Cornell people, but it's new in terms of program delivery for us here in the East. And I'd like to know your feedback on this. I'm sure Mike Baysdale also would like to know what you think of them. Um, I'll tell you, a, a what I've been hearing is that people really like them. It's fantastic to have Terrence with us on a weekly basis and more frequently than that, to, to be able to react to the situation. Zoom has worked really well for that. But I'll tell you what, my fear is that we've lost some of our growers um, 
for either through technological reasons or, or not just not willing to do a Zoom. And I want to know about that and your opinions on that. And you in the growing community, as you hear your, your colleagues and friends talk, please give us some feedback um, about how we can improve on that. Really would appreciate that. And with that, any other comments from our group? We have one last question. Mm -hmm. For Southern Hudson Valley blocks that are pushing out of the prime thinning window already, it looks rainy now through Friday night. If the carbohydrate model says increase rates by 30% on Saturday, do we go with that or go higher? You had mentioned at least 30% before. No, I'd, I'd like to just do the 30%. Um, what doesn't seem to work sometimes is just increasing, increasing the rate. But what works better is to come back with another spray next week. So increase rates 30% this time around, and then maybe six days later, come back with another spray. That seems to work better for us over the years with the last spray having a pint of oil in it to increase effectiveness. Okay, any more questions? <clears throat> okay, if not, Terrence, thank you very much. Donna, right. thank you. Sarah, thank you. And everybody have a good rest of the day and we'll see you again next week.